no matter where you go, there's no place like home. Amen. I asked Brother Steve, and he said they hadn't planned or made any announcements about tonight. So tonight we'll just have a regular service. We'll have our eating meeting tonight, just a regular service. <laughs> if you have your Bibles this morning, turn with us to Second Timothy. Chapter 3, script, scripture that everybody knows. We've preached on it before. Got three different scriptures we want to read this morning. But my mind went to generations. And as I began to think about different generations, I couldn't help but think about, and I looked to see what the world considered a generation. It says that a generation at one point was 20 years. Now they say it's 25 years. And they say it's according to the age that people get married and start reproducing. When I think about a generation, I think about the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, right on up to the day we're living in. I can't go beyond the 40s other than what I've heard people say. And in reality, I can't go a whole lot into the 40s because I was born in 1942. So I can relate more to the 50s because I was more mature than I was whenever I was back in the 40s. I can tell you what my parents told me and my grandparents told me about the 30s. I can tell you what they told me about the 40s. Amen. And as I look on the different generations, and I thought about my daughter, she was born in 1959. She probably didn't want me to tell you that. <laughs> but in reality, she would remember more about the 70s than she would even the 60s. She would start recollecting some of the 60s, but more in the 70s than she would the 60s. So you might say, if you were born in the 50s, you would relate more to the 60s. And, and her being on 59, she'd relate more to the 70s. If you was born in the 40s, you'd relate more to the 50s. Amen? So I feel like every generation is ever 10 years myself. And I've watched the church over the years. I know what the world was going through. I know that I was born during, during me and my brother both during the uh, World War II. I know that America was having a struggle during that time. And we look about today, and the younger generation today has no idea of what the folks back there went through. All they see is the prosperity of today and the wealth and, and the things of today. Back then, folks didn't have much choice but to depend on God. And there was a fear of God. Amen. So I want to read these scriptures and then give you what the Lord give me and then let you do with it what you would like. Amen. In 2 Timothy 3 and 1, it says, Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. We're living in that day. Amen. Listen to what it goes on to say, and this is the condition that we're in today. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Amen. I woke up early one morning some years ago. First thought that came to my mind was this scripture said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And I got to looking to see what it was and praying about it, and I believe if you'll read that part and go back and read the other part, the power, amen, of, of this godliness of God will help you to overcome all of those things. That's, they deny the power because they continue in those things. Amen. Listen to what it goes on to say. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust. People that's not seeking God and they're being led away with their own lust. And isn't that where America's at today? We're fulfilling our lust and not seeking God. 
ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus said he was the truth. He said the truth has set you free. He said if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If I keep commandments of the Lord, he'll set me free. Amen. And then you may be seated. Then I, I got to thinking about the way that the world is today and the way the world thinks today. And I hope I don't bore you this morning. But I, I got to thinking about it, and I got to think about how people are counting on how much the Lord loved the world. Amen? It's hard sometimes when you go and you have to preach a funeral and you don't know the condition of that person. And about all you can do is try to bring a message across that will help others to see their need for Jesus. And that he planned a reunion one day. Amen. For the saints of God, he planned a reunion. But I want to try to get this across if I don't get nothing else across this morning. When you stand before the Lord, when I stand before the Lord, we're not going to be judged about how much he loved us. Can you get a hold of that this morning? We will not be judged about how much he loved us, for we know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal or everlasting life. Amen. If we believe in him, we're going to keep his commandments. If we believe in him, we're going to be in the house of God. When we come to the house of God, we're going to come to get greater understanding of the word of God, to seek the spirit of God and the power of God, and seek to be more in the image of Jesus. Amen. So when you stand before the Lord, you're going to be judged by how much you loved him, not how much he loved you. We need to get a hold of that because I'm afraid America has overlooked that and they think that the Lord just loves any and everything that goes on. No, he loved us before we was even born enough that he gave his son to die for our sins. But when we stand before him, we're going to be judged according to how much we were willing to yield to him, to his spirit, and let him be the Lord of our lives. Amen. Now I want to jump over to another scripture that you know very well and it's Romans 12 and 1. And two, he says, I beseech you therefore, brother, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God's not asking anything unreasonable of you and I. We're supposed to present our bodies a living sacrifice. We're supposed to come before him, worship him, seek him, seek his desires in our life. Amen. And then he says in the second verse, be not conformed to this world. The problem with the church today is it's conformed to the world. This message won't be popular this morning, but I'm going to try to warn you. And that's what he set us ahead of the church for is to warn folks. Amen. He said in Ezekiel, if you put a watchman on the wall and the enemy comes and he doesn't warn the people, that their blood will be required at his hands. He said, but if he warned the people and they don't take heed, then their blood will be required of their own hands. So I'm not here this morning to be popular. I'm not here this morning to try to build a big congregation. I'm here to try to warn you where America has come from and where America is and where the church world is today. Amen. I need your prayers this morning. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be hateful. I'm not trying to prove my point. I'm trying to warn you of what's happening in America. Amen. And we're seeing more and more every day of what's happening here. Amen. Now, it said for us not to be conformed to the world. That means made to resemble. Does that mean look like, act like? Huh? Made to resemble. Amen. Talking about conformed. Praise the Lord. Reduced to the likeness of. Think about the church world years ago and think about being reduced to the likeness of. Amen. Or made agreeable to. The church is in too much agreement with the world. Amen. Or to be suited. Just sit right in, just fit right in. Amen. The word transform in theology is to change the natural disposition and temper of a man from the state of enmity to God, being the enemy of God, is what it's saying. Amen. And his laws to the image of God and into a disposition and temper conform to the will of God. 
We're supposed to be transformed into his image and his likeness, have the temperament that he has. Come on. Amen. There's supposed to be a definite difference whenever we become a child of God. But I see the world being transformed. I hope you'll bear with me this morning. I can only start in the 40s, and I can only tell you, and I hope the Lord will help me this morning, put a lot of study into this, still don't feel like that I can give it justice, but I'm going to try to bring it to you this morning. I remember whenever that I was small, I remember hearing my grandmother, and I remember hearing my mom talk about something that most of you won't know nothing about. Brother Willie May, Sister Ann May, you ever hear of ration books? Ration books. Do you know what it is? America was in a situation that you couldn't just go out and buy a pair of shoes. You had to have permission from the government to buy shoes. You couldn't just go buy a tire and put on your car unless it was black market without you had a ration book to buy it. I can remember my dad going to work and he'd have to put cardboard in the bottom of his shoes to keep him walking on the bare concrete. I can remember him sitting down with hay wire and sewing the sole back on his shoes. America hasn't always been this prosperous. But there was one thing about it. They feared God. They loved God. And they went to the house of God to worship God. They went there, amen, to be transformed, not conformed, but transformed to that that God would have them to be. Amen. So America needs to look back, and we need to see where God has brought us to. I, I thought about in the 40s, amen, how that the mothers was at home. I can't remember ever coming home even through the 50s, the 60s. I come home, mom was at home. Mom was there to take care of the children. She kept, took care of the house. She provided the meals, amen. Dad got out and worked for it, amen. But we had a better life than we have today. Glory to God. Did you know that we didn't have any TV to corrupt us? Come on. The enjoyment they had was the parents would get out there on the old dirt road in the evenings and we'd play softball or baseball together. Us kids would get out there and especially right after dark or right before dark, we'd get out there and play hide and go seek. And when, when you went to church, you went to church with reverence. You wasn't allowed to sit and talk in church. You didn't have a, a church out there for the children where you could give them soda pop and, come on, donuts. The children sit in the church with the parents, and the children was quiet and behaved themselves. Come on. There was respect for the house of God. Back then, they didn't allow a lot of things that we see going on today in the house of God. Amen. But America's was blessed. We didn't have to worry about our children getting outside and playing after dark. We didn't have to worry about somebody coming along and kidnapping them. We didn't have to worry about somebody, amen, coming along there and, and molesting one of our children. We didn't have to worry about a sexual predator in our neighborhood because if it come out, they would be put out of the neighborhood. But you've got to be in the state that we're living in. You've got to be kind and, and understanding. And if you're not real understanding, you might run them off. Come on. I'm still trying to tell you that there needs to be a difference in the house of God and let you see where we've fallen from. Amen? I, I couldn't help but think about back in the 40s, and I know somebody's going to get upset, but I've got to preach what God gives me. Back in the 40s, women didn't wear britches. Come on. Amen? Until the war started, and then they had a lack of men, and they put women to work building aircraft and things, and you can go back into history and you can hear about or read about Rosie the Riveter. And they started wearing the jumpsuits that the military furnished, overalls, if you will. And from that point on, America has started going downhill. God blessed us, won the war. My mind even went to back in whenever the, we had the, the desert storm. There was people at our church that come wanting us to pray. Pray God will deliver my son. Pray God will uh, let my son come home. Amen. Without any problems. Well, guess what? They did. Guess how they celebrated it? Throw them a drunken party instead of coming to church and worshiping God and thanking God for the deliverance that he gave them. Amen. Praise the Lord. There was a fear 
Amen. The TV didn't corrupt the kids because there wasn't one. Amen. Then we move on to the 50s, and mom's still staying home, still taking care of the kids. Dad's still working and supplying the income for the family and the, the necessities of the family. But then came TV, which had wholesome programming. Did you know Dazzy and Lucy couldn't even sleep in the same bed together? Come on, Ricky and, Ricky and Lucy had twin beds. They couldn't sleep in the same bed together because it wasn't accepted to be put out there before our children. Come on. It wasn't to be an influence on our children. Where we're at today in America, they've got homosexuals right there on the TV for our children to see. They've got people in the bed. Got every foul language. Like, did you know that the cigarette manufacturer couldn't even speak against the other cigarette manufacturer to call their name because they wouldn't allow it? Then my mind went to in the 50s, if you'll remember some of you. Some of you still wasn't here. But in the 50s come along this young fella by the name of Elvis Presley. And he come along with what they called gyrating. Come on. All the moves from the waist down. And parents and churches was preaching against it with all they was worth. Amen. Trying to keep their kids from getting wrapped up in that. Praise the Lord. So when this young man brings in the rock and roll and all the teenagers go after that, they put him on the Ed Sullivan show. And our national TV was so wholesome then, they would only show him from the waist up. Come on. And preachers was preaching against it. Nowadays, we're allowing it in the church. Come on. Amen. I'm trying to show you where the church and where America has fallen from. Praise the Lord. Now, the 50s was bad, but it wasn't nearly as bad as the 60s. And that's where America and the church will begin to start. And that was the worst decade, I believe, of American history was the 60s. Praise the Lord forever. Amen. In that time in the 50s, the churches did not believe in public bathing. Amen? None whatsoever. They didn't believe in wearing bathing suits. They didn't believe in wearing shorts. Come on. Amen? I'm not preaching something new. I'm preaching something that we fell from. Come on. I just seen a video of a youth camp, and they had them girls up there with their short shorts on and their tank tops on. Them men up there with their shorts and their, their tank tops, and they're playing gospel music and bouncing around on the stage up there. This is where the church world's gone to. Amen. I believe the word said a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. It started back there in the 50s and the 60s, and it's come on up, and it's took it all these years to get to where we're at today. Amen. I read something just last night where it was talking about over the last 40 years, the problem is that the parents quit going to church. The parents quit taking their kids to church, and that's why we're where we're at today. Now, whenever I look at that, and Think about the last 40 years, amen. I think about how that I've talked to people for the last 30 years, and before I ever started trying to talk to them and got back in church like I should have been, they said, I've learned better, or we've learned better, the church has learned better. Well, we've learned better, but it sure brought us to a mess that we're in today. Come on, amen. Back in the 50s, amen, the world was, the church would not allow the shorts, amen, or the bathing suits, but the world was allowing one-piece bathing suits. Towards the last of the 50s, they went to a two-piece bathing suit, and you would have thought that everything gone haywire. Amen. The, the churches were against it. They preached against it. They taught against it. But then comes the 60s, and when we get to the 60s, we got our teeny-weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Come on. I'm just telling you like it is, church. We're in a mess in America, and we've allowed it because we've been so politically correct to keep from offending somebody that the church has gone to pot. Amen. Listen to what happened in the 60s. Amen. In the 60s, the first thing we had is four assassinations. Never heard of it in my life to then. John F. Kennedy was, was assassinated. Malcolm X was assassinated, Robert Kennedy was assassinated, and Martha Luther King was assassinated. And then we had something really great happen to America. We had this hippie flower child generation start up. Come on. I don't know of a preacher. I didn't hear a preach against it. 
They come in with their long hair and they come in with their beards. They come in with their, their drugs. This is when drugs really started. Amen. It was in the 60s. This is where people really started rebelling against the, the, what they called the system. Amen. But this is not the system. This was a plan of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then right in the midst of all that, we had this fellow by the name of Charles Manson. He formed a hippie cult, amen, and called it the family. And he convinced the family to go over and kill people in this home. He thought somebody else was living there, which did own it. But Sharon Tate and her family had moved into it. She was killed and her unborn baby by one of these hippie generations. Oh, I'd love to look just like Charles Manson, wouldn't you? Uh, I'd like for po folks to associate me with that. I believe I'd rather be associated with Jesus. Come on. Amen. A and then in on top of that, amen, we had in August the 15th of 1969, we had 500,000 people gather together. They had planned on and sold tickets for like 180,000. But when word got out what was going on, they just started coming. They broke the fences down and walked right on in. And we had this glorious thing they called Woodstock in the 60s. Come on now. Amen. The church spoke out against it. <laughs> they was having orgies. They was doing drugs. They had nude bathing. Come on. 500,000 people. And some still today glorify it. Amen. This was in August of 1969. The music, amen, there was all this top rock music, all the top stars of that day. Amen. They, at that time, they started uh, allowing in the churches, they started allowing... Uh, Public bathing, but not mixed bathing. No mixed bathing. Amen. Come on. I ain't tell I'm really getting across. And the bathing, the, the bikini bathing suit was very popular by the end of the 60s. And now the men no longer wore the boxer type bathing suits. Some of you remember, some of you won't. But they wore them jockey type where you could see the imprint of everything they had. Amen. The church spoke out against it. Today, we're get, can you see where we're getting more and more world? We're conforming to the world as time goes on. Amen. The people is not taking, they're not going to church. They're not taking their children to church. They're just making their opinions, sitting around talking about what God will and won't and how much God loves the world. God just loves us. Come on. Praise the Lord. The 70s, we had this charismatic bunch come into the church. They started out teaching to speak in tongues. Anybody remember that? Huh? The preacher spoke out against it back then, but we didn't speak out hard enough. We, we, we didn't try the spirits that come into our churches. We let things come in that shouldn't have. Amen? They started choreographing their dancing. Go back and look up some of those old first Oral Roberts programs. He had to make a job for Richard, and Richard's job was to sing and choreograph the dancing so they could dance in the spirit. Amen. The Holy Ghost is the one that's supposed to cause us to dance in the spirit. As he moves, we're supposed to speak in, his, in tongues as he gives the utterance. Amen. It's not something that can be taught and be of God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Also, in the 60s, in 1969, was the beginning of the gay movement. 1969. How many years has it been now? Ron, you done figured it, I know. How many? 46 years ago. Hey Amen. How many times we read in the Old Testament where there would be prophecy and it would be 40, 50 years later before it would come to pass? Come on. Amen. But that was the beginning of the gay movement. Up to that point, they didn't dare come out of the closet. They put them out of the neighborhood. Amen. Didn't want them around their children. Let me just 
say this. I've had little children three years old come up to me and talk about mommy's pregnant. I didn't hear that word, Sister Betty, until I was up 10 years old or better. And that was when my little sister was born. And they got to tell it to the, the neighbors told me about my mother was pregnant. She was going to the hospital to have the baby. We didn't talk that stuff. I, I'm here to tell you, men did not cuss around women and children. If they did, the other men would get on them right quick and put a whooping on them. Today, we got the women cussing worse than the men ever thought about. Come on. Amen. Back then, the only ones you seen with these tattoos was idiots like me. Amen. People will say, I got one on my arm. They'll say, well, what is that? I say, stupidity. Amen. It's stupidity. Teenager, 16 years old. Stupidity. Amen. And the Bible teaches us to make marks on our body. Come on. But now we're accepted in the church. We got pastors that's tattooed from one end to the other. The women's tattooed all over their legs, their backs, their thighs, everywhere else. Amen. And, and, and we're still, we're, oh, we're serving God. We're a nation under God. No, we've strayed so far from God and the Word of God and allowed it to come into the churches. Amen. And here we are in the shape we're in. Amen. Listen, in the charismatic churches, they started teaching them to speak in tongues. They started teaching them, amen, uh, to, to dance in the Spirit. They, they okayed the fact that now they can wear their shorts and their culottes, some even wearing their culottes to church, because they look like a skirt. Let's go to the 80s. Amen. In the 80s, we began to hear about plant a seed that it might prosper. Now, there's a scripture that says that we're supposed to plant the seeds, amen? But it says that the seed is the word of God. Now they turned it around in the 80s. There again, we go back to Mr. Roberts. And Mr. Roberts is saying that if you'll place $100 in the offering, you'll get $1,000 back. Now, in so much that some people just don't seem to be able to understand I watched the program when Jim Baker was on there. People said, y'all not watch it. I watched it because I want to know who my enemy was. Come on. I didn't watch it because I believed in it. I want to know who my enemy was. And I watched it, and Oral Roberts is sitting there with Jim Baker, and he's got a check in his hand. And he explains to Jim Baker that I was at a meeting, and the Lord impressed me to give $100. I reached in my wallet, and all I had was a $10 bill. And I decided I was going to give that in faith as if it was 100. I punched my buddy, said, what do you see? He said, a $10 bill. He said, no, that's a $100 bill. He said, no, Oral, that's a $10 bill. He said, in faith, I'm giving it as if it was 100. He said, and I gave it, and God increased me $1,000. Now I got a check for you. I'm going to give you for $1,000. Let me tell you how God worked with me back in the 70s. He moved on me, and I didn't have it to give $100 into a building fund. I didn't have it, and I, I just wouldn't even consider it. <laughs> but then, you know what happened? The Lord spoke to me again. He said, now give 200 And I said, Lord, just as soon as I get it, I'll give it. Wherever it comes from, I'll give it. I don't have it, but I'll give it as soon as I get it. Amen. Didn't think about an income tax check that was coming in. But I was afraid if I didn't give the 200, God might say give 400. I had some fear of the Lord, amen? People today will just do like they please, don't even pay their full tithes a lot of times because they want to use it for something else. And I'm not harping on your money. I'm trying to warn you, amen? Praise the Lord. I run that fella down. I needed tires on my car and I needed a battery. And the Lord worked it out to where I got four tires and a battery for $44, which the check was for $244. I'm here to tell you, you can depend on God. Amen. But we can't sow money or give money expecting to get back. If we're going to do anything and we want to see it prosper, let's put out the word of God and let's live a holy life before God that people can see the difference and know that there is a difference in Christians and that we've not conformed to the world. Amen. So in the 80s they began that. Then they began to play them with the power of God. Amen. You know, you pray for them, knock them down, and you stand them up, and you pray for them and knock them down, and you stand them up. 
Come on, that's not God. You don't play with the power of God. I don't care who it is. Yes, I believe God slays people in the spirit. Matter of fact, I remember when Ozzeline first come to the church at Southside. She was sick. She wasn't serving the Lord. And when she walked up there, I used to look to see where they're at, and I closed my eyes to pray for them. When I reached out, Brother Steve, I couldn't find her. I opened my eyes, and she's laying in the floor. Amen. I didn't knock her down because I didn't touch her. But we got them now, going to knock them down, pick them up. I got news for you. If God slays them in spirit, you can't pick them up. Come on. But we've not tried the spirit. We don't have any discernment. So we just accept and are conforming to what the world's bringing into our church. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Not only did they start that, amen, but now they could even blow them down. Because Jesus blowed on them and said, receive you, the Holy, receive you the Holy Ghost. So we're going to blow them down. I got news for you. If you ain't living right, the Holy Ghost is not coming in. Amen. And if you're not living right, you won't receive from God until you begin to listen to him and obey him. He said, those that obey him, amen. Those that love him will keep his commandments. Praise the Lord. And now, now it's okay in the, in the 80s, it's okay, Amen. To wear a little bit of jewelry and makeup, as long as you don't go in excess. In the 70s, this started. The, the movement that we was in, I forget now, they had in over the states, they had a little better than 400 churches. They had about eight churches, if I recall right, in Florida. And there was two of those churches started going worldly. Amen? The rest of them was holding a standard. Next thing you know, they've all gone worldly. A little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. Amen. If you do it, I'm going to have to do it, or my people's going to leave. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. As long as it's modest, you know, just a little bit. Now the mixed bathing's okay. Not only that, but we've got the skinheads. And that hardcore punk music hey man i'm boring some of you to death i can tell <laughs> hey man but we got the skinheads now where are we at do i want to go back and look like one of those hippies and say i'm representing jesus you don't know what it is some of you because you wasn't there you wasn't even born then amen do i want to now the skinheads started in the 60s also but in the 80s they got a little more popular it was a hate group they shaved their heads what we got going on today? Be not conformed. But Brother Bill, that was, that was 30, 40 years ago. What goes around comes around. There's nothing new under the sun. Amen. And the devil comes in through these things. If he don't get it all across one time, he'll bring it back the next time. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. The 90s. Amen. The church can't speak out, speak out against even living together out of wedlock. You might offend them if you speak out against it. It wasn't allowed in the community when I was a kid. Much less the church accepted it. We'll accept it now because we don't want to offend them. Amen. You might run them off. You might run them off, but you also might turn them to God if you tell them the truth. Because the truth will set you free according to the word of God. Amen. <coughs> Also, in the 60s and 70s, the church for, forbade people going to the circuses and fairs. The main thing was because of the lifestyle them people lived. And you may not know it, I worked at the fair for two years with the city of Jacksonville. And that's some of the filthiest people, immoral people there is. Amen. Not only that, but they had their boardwalk and they had all these con artists taking people's money from them. I know of people who lost a whole paycheck. They would have them tossing a ring or something. And just as soon as they win, they change the rules, and they end up taking their whole paycheck. They had to bring the law in and make them reimburse some of them people. Amen? So we've got them, amen, that's uh, going to the fairs and circles. And, and I'll be honest with you. If it wasn't for the appearance, I would like to go to the livestock. I enjoy the livestock show at the, at the circus. But it's the appearance, and it says, shun the appearance of evil. People see me there, they see my car there, they don't know what I'm doing there. Amen? Now, you can make up your mind and do what you want to do. I'm just telling you where the church once stood and where we're at today. Amen? 
Praise the Lord. The games of chance, now we have the lottery. And we got so many Christians participating in it. Amen. I read where one here some years back where one preacher was preaching against playing the lottery. So his wife had her brother-in-law play the lottery for her, and she won. Now she's got to tell the preacher. Amen. Now, was there anything wrong with playing the lottery? In my opinion, yes. But if there wasn't, she lied to her husband, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Come on. <laughs> Glory to God. Now we got our prayer language. And we don't pray in our prayer language whenever the Holy Ghost moves. We do it when the preacher says to. Come on. Amen. I was preaching one night and I always told the church I don't have a prayer language. In other words, I couldn't speak in tongues and pray in tongues when I wanted to. I still can't. Amen. But the Lord checked me. He said, you do have a prayer language while I'm preaching. And I said, pardon me, church. I've got to apologize. God said, I do have a prayer language. And he said, it's English with a southern drawl. Whenever I pray in my own understanding and I get to where I can pray no more, the Holy Ghost of God will come on the scene and help me to pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. If I got to wait on the preacher to tell me to speak in tongues, pray in tongues, I might get in a place where I need help and the preacher ain't there to tell me. Come on. Amen. Let's go on up to the 2000s. And let's talk just a little bit on that. Amen. Now the church is in 2000. They got worship teams. Hmm? I can remember when they come into church, the old saints come into church. When they come into the church, their husband's off home, been drunk all night, Saturday night. Them old saints come into church and they come in worshiping the Lord. Next thing you know, the power of God falls and you had church sinners get out of the pews and go to the altar because of the power of God being in the, in the church. But now we're so wrapped up in our problems that we can't worship God. And we got it all planned out how we're going to worship God. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> and now the church preaches prosperity. Amen. <clears throat> we have our services program so that we pass out a schedule so as to be out by noon. We've got churches saying, come just as you are. My mom was living in Arlington. She died in 94. She was living over there probably somewhere around 90, 89, 90. She got a, a brochure, came out. They're starting a new church in the, in the Thunderbird Motel over on Arlington Expressway. And come just as you are. If, if you want to go into the ball game whenever the, the service is over, you'll be out in plenty of time to make it to the ball game before the kickoff. Come just as you are. If you're going to the beach, come dress for the beach. Come on, church. I'm trying to tell you where we've fallen from. And people would fall for that because it appeased the flesh. Amen. Please the flesh. Now, we've got the rock gospel in our churches. The teen, so the teenagers, amen, will be happy and they'll be encouraged. And we can't speak against it. If we do, we might offend them. I'm going to tell you about a church. And I'm not going to call no names because some of you would know who it was. Some of you may know anyhow. But there was a preacher that preached straight. He joined an organization. He went off and they trained him to be a pastor. He come back. He was pastoring a church. And this rock group came along. Young group. Going to get the kids in. We're going to have rock gospel. We're going to get the kids in. We're going to have the kids come in. That's going to bring the kids. Well, it did. It brought the kids. But the next thing you know, the preacher's wife is sleeping with a 16-year-old leader of that group. His daughter's running around with one of the men, in the boy, young boys in that group. Why should we bring the world into the church? Come on. Come on. Ended up busted up because they brought the world into the church. Whenever we went over there one night, Deanna and I went over there, and I seen whenever they started going to the church, and I seen the way that his daughter was dressed. And I said, 
There's something wrong. Something happened. It wasn't long after that before this took place. Church, I'm trying to tell you a little leaven. leaven the whole lump. We can't entertain our children according to the world, even though we put religious words in it. We can't entertain our children and expect to win them to the Lord because they're going to get out there. It's going to be the same beat. Come on. They're going to be doing this. I, I see in the church today, we went to a, a thing that Ashley's school had when she was in about the 10th or 11th grade. We went up there, and they had this band come in there, and they was all tattooed up, and they had this, and they went to, I, I don't know what you call it, but they was jumping around. Deanna just had surgery, and I had to get in front of her and push her behind me and get her out of there to keep them from hurting her the way they was cutting up and acting. I see the same thing in the churches today. I was shocked that the school would allow such as that in the school, but now I see it in the churches. I'm still preaching on not being conformed to the world, if you don't mind. I, I'm still preaching separation, and I'm trying to let you know where America has got, come from and where she is today. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to warn us, and that's what God's called me to do is warn the people. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we come to 2010. The church now preaches prosperity. In order to be politically correct, we never preach on hell. We never name sin. We just call it sin and let you figure out for yourself what it is. All the churches are teaching our children to have a form of godliness, saying all you have to do is believe and repeat a prayer. That's a form of godliness. That's not salvation. Amen. All you have to repeat. And so doing, we're denying them the knowledge of true salvation. Churches today are teaching our kids to sing upbeat songs and to praise and worship moves, which is a form of godliness. We went over to this church at Cedar Key. They had just finished up their youth camp or youth Bible, uh, vacation Bible school. They just finished it up, and they had these kids up there performing some of the things they had learned in their vacation Bible school. It was praise and worship that most churches, and I'm not going to say just Pentecostal churches, wouldn't allow. Amen? We think that we're being put down or moved on. Go to some of the big churches and try to pull some of the stuff you pull into the little church. Hmm? Come on. No respect of God. No fear of God. Go out there, live like the devil, and then come and want to serve God on Sunday morning. Amen. I'm glad you are shout like you are. I'm just going to say this. If you were born after 1990, unless you were raised in a Christian home, I'm talking about really true wholeness home, you have no idea what wholeness is. Ashley was raised in holiness, but she's let the lust of the world control her and I'll be honest with you she's an embarrassment to me when she come here the last time sit down I said you need to sit on the second pew you don't need to sit on the first amen and if she comes back I'll take my jacket I didn't think about it and put over her come on it's time parents stood up and set some standards for the kids come on it's time we reverence God it's time we look back See where we've fallen from. Amen. Now the gays have the advantage over the Christians. As it was in the days of Lot, so is it today. So is it today. The men of the city had rule. The men of the city, if you'll remember, came and desired the two men that was in Lot's house. Lot said, I've got two virgin daughters. Take them. No, we want the men. Huh? Come on. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's just bring this thing on down to a close by going over to Ephesians 4 and 17. I want to go back and read Timothy, and then I want to read Ephesians 4 and 17. Timothy 2, 3 and 1. Through seven. For know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, 
boasters, proud, blasphemers. Well, look at me and look what I can do. Don't care what God thinks about it. I'm going to do my thing. Amen. Disobedient to parents. I've never seen it like it is now. Will minds me when I speak to him. His mama comes in and he argues with her. Five years old, been doing it since he was three years old. Come on. Unthankful. Unholy. You do things for people today and it's like you owe it to me. And the church owes it. I had some people come in here just a few weeks back. After service, a man and woman came in. And they're telling me the story about one of their parents had died and they was up in a northern state. And they had talked to their neighbors and they would got up all the money they needed, but $18 so they could fly up and be for the funeral up there. I had $20 in my pocket that the Lord had moved on me to give someone else. And they didn't show up that morning. And I told them, I said, well, I got $20 here that I'll let you have. I was going to give it to someone else, but I'll let you have it. And I said, where do you go to church? Oh, we don't go to church. I sort of figured that from their appearance when they came in. They said, but we got a Bible at home. And, and, and we got TV, and we watch the preachers on TV. I said, that's not going to get it. If you're not in the house of God where the Spirit of God's moving, where there's fellowship with God's people, you'll never get to heaven because the devil's going to throw things at you, and you're going to get false teachings. Amen. They went out of here on a huff and went spinning off out the driveway. It was all right to take my money, but they didn't want to hear the truth. Come on. Amen. Listen. Unholy, unthankful, without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort, I'm going to stop right there and let's go on over to Ephesians. For of such turn away. Ephesians 4 and 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Folks sitting home, deciding what God will want to do in their own mind. Come on, church. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of their blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto the lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness and greediness. Now wait a minute, he said, I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. And he's telling how they walk, which means we're not supposed to walk that way. Am I right? But you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversations the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness." And I want to read this scripture, and I'm going to come to a close. Somebody said the Supreme Court, give the gays the right to be married. It wasn't the Supreme Court did it. It was five people in America. And when you get right down to it, it was one man. He had the deciding vote. Still with me? Amen. Did he do that just so his name would go down in history? It sure wasn't because he had a fear of God. Amen. If he feared God, to start with, if this group of people feared God, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. It's another way for the enemy to come against the church. Amen. So we've got five men, or, or three women and two men, that made the vote, but one man made the final decision. Now they're going to say because the church didn't do anything. I can agree that we didn't hold the standards that we should have. There's no fear of the Lord anymore because in reality, most of the church members don't fear God. I'm going to do my thing. Amen. I'm going to close with this. The altar will be open. You do what you want to do. 
you think what you want to think, but I feel like I've tried to warn you and give you a picture of where the church left from and where the church is. Amen. But in Isaiah 55 and 6, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Church, if we're not very careful, it's going to be impossible to find the Lord. Because we're going to get so wrapped up in the teachings of the worldly church that the Spirit of God is not going to be there. No man comes into the Father unless he comes by Jesus. And no man comes unless he's drawn of the Spirit. If you've got a false spirit in the church, it's going to draw you in the wrong direction. Amen. Seek you, Lord, while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. There'll never be a, a better day than today for you to seek the Lord. Find this great plan of salvation. Never be a better day. Over the last 40 to 50 years, look where we've come from to where we are. It's got worse and it's got harder to find the Lord because there's so many different doctrines out there and so many different ways. And I'm not here this morning to build a church. I'm not here to get a big denomination. I'm not here this morning to try to build, make money. I'm here this morning to try to warn you that the raft is to come. You might say it doesn't have any effect on me what they do. You wait and see. It's going to have effect on this whole nation. This whole nation is going to be seeing the wrath of God because we've turned from God. Amen. I've given you this morning what I felt like the Lord gave me. I've not come in here to beat nobody up. I've just come in here to try to give you a vision of where America's come from to where she is. God prospered her from the 40s and 30s, but then we got to where we counted on our prosperity and forgot God. Amen. The church world in order, and, and I'm going to say this before I quit. Whenever the, the 70s come around, most of the preachers was preaching holiness, is preaching separation, but their kids come up to be teenagers. And rather than stand against the teenage beliefs of that day and what the teenagers wanted, they gave in to them. Some of those rebellious teenagers are now the leaders in the churches. Amen. The altar's open if you want to come pray.